we're going to do today. We're going to talk about changing from lawn maintenance to landscaping. We're going to talk about allowing your company to grow by taking on bigger projects and the natural evolution of a company as it grows. One of the things that I want to focus on today is bigger projects mean bigger problems, but it also means bigger profits. Um, one of the things that I noticed right away that if you're in lawn maintenance and you're looking at getting into landscaping, go for it, do it. But I want you to understand there is a fundamental difference between lawn maintenance and landscaping that goes beyond the work you do, and it's in the pricing structure. Now with lawn maintenance itself, it's a very cutthroat business. It's about the bottom dollar. People don't like to spend a lot of money to have their lawns cut, their grass looking green. They want to try to save every pinch, every penny. But when it comes to landscaping, the exact opposite is the truth. You see this staircase I built behind me? This is a great example where a customer will pay extra to make sure that they're in good hands. They want to feel comfortable about the, who they're hiring to do the job. We're going to go, we're going to run through the gamut. I'm going to show you some pretty big projects today. I'm going to walk you through it. It's a, I know it's a long video, but it's going to be well worth it. And in the end, I want you to understand, I want you to find the right fit for your company. This job here, this is my own house, but this is a great example. I want you to understand that a lot of times I try not to be the lowest bidder. In fact, I've lost more jobs than I can count because I was the low bidder. And a lot of times, a customer doesn't feel comfortable with that. In fact, uh, city government offices don't feel comfortable with the low bidder. That's why they have on all their bids, they, they have the right to choose who they're going to hire. And a lot of times, that low bid means that you miss something. And when you miss something, and you're the contractor, what's going to happen is the customer is going to get bid in the end. Contractors, we don't have a great reputation, so they... The customer really wants to feel like they're in good hands. That's a huge point. Much different than lawn maintenance where it's about paying the least amount to get your grass cut. In this case, a customer will pay the medium guy. But that's not the point to this video. The point to this video is the evolution, growing your company. What that means, the level of responsibility you're going to be taking on. I hope by the time this video is done today, you've gained something. So let's take you on that journey. Let's get the ball rolling. Yeah. Hey boy, where are we off to today? School? That's right, we're riding bike to school. We can't do this nine months out of the year, but the other three weeks we can, right? Yeah. We're at school <laughs> like 20 minutes early. <laughs> hey, you know what? If he's pumped and excited about riding his bike to school, that helps him get involved academically. That's fine, because I don't know, boy takes a little bit after me. <laughs> Not a big school fan, but uh, we're here, and I want to talk to you about what we're going to be doing today. It's all about engineering. It's all about taking your business to the next level and what that means. If you're in lawn care, if you're in landscaping, you will have bigger projects. As they grow, you're going to find, you're going to make me dizzy in the background, Colton. You're going to find that you have more and more responsibility. And um, I'm going to walk you through that journey today. It's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be different than maybe what you're used to seeing. So let's go on adventure. It is a jam-packed day today. Before I can get anything done, i got to go to the dump. Look at all this crap. This is just it's not even a start of all the stuff I've collected from different houses and places. And the, For instance, the two bikes I was riding in on this morning to school. I pulled them both out of houses. <sighs> I'm so running far behind right now. I'm at the dump, dropping this garbage off. You know, I tell you to connect with every person possible. Well, the reason I'm so far behind is because one of the guys that I've connected with, he works at the dump here but he also owns his own landscaping lawn care company and um, we've been trying to hook up. Well, we ran into each other here and uh, he does a lot of residential and commercial lawn maintenance and that's a strong connection. My competition, yes, I, but I work with my competition. You guys know that. 
And uh, he knows that. And he's asking me, hey, what kind of jobs can I throw your way? And I'm telling him what I'm looking for. And I, he, I'm asking him, of course, how can I help you out? And um, unfortunately, this has put me behind. So what's next on the list is now we've got a 45-minute trip up to uh, Maple Grove because we've got a big project. We're a strong contender. Now, we don't have a signed contract by any means, but we're a very strong contender. And it's probably about an $80,000 repair job on a retaining wall for an association. <clears throat> This is what I want to talk to you guys about, um, is what's going to happen as your business grows, you're going to find yourself involved more and more with bigger, more complicated, more complex projects. And so I'm just going to prepare you for what to expect as your company grows and you get to that point. Now let's, let's talk through what we've got going on. This is a pretty typical Monday, okay? This is what we've got happening today. We've got a $90,000 retaining wall replacement project. Boop! In Mendota Heights. Um, and how did I land that? I landed that by going to committee meetings. And uh, I was asked if I would be willing to meet with the committee on Valentine's Day at 6 o'clock. Now, as soon as I heard that, I told them, ah, yes, I will be there with the candy and the flowers. You don't hesitate. It doesn't matter if it's Valentine's Day, six o'clock. You always got Valentine's Day at seven and eight o'clock to make up for it with your wife. And so you've got to sacrifice some of those things as you get involved in it. Today, we're going up to Maple Grove to meet with the engineers for the city, as well as a private engineer, as well as a developer, as well as two townhome associations because this project affects multiple people across different boundaries. And this is what you're gonna run into. And uh, I want you guys to be prepared. I, want you, I don't want you to think that a landscaping, a $3,000 job is gonna be the same as a $33,000 job, which is gonna be the same as a $103,000 job. As you move up, you're gonna have bigger responsibilities, time commitments, conflicts and schedule. And a lot of times you gotta say yes just to get your foot in the door. You've got to say yes to show that you're serious about getting this job. Hey, there's something that I got to point out. I don't tell you the size of the jobs that I'm working on to brag about how big of a project we can handle. That's not the point. I want to show you the pattern and what to expect as your company grows. Right now, you may be starting out and you may be doing five or 10 $30 jobs. And in a year or two years from that point, you may be doing five or ten $300 jobs. I remember the first time 20 years ago that I got two $4,000 jobs. I literally sat on the end of my bed and I couldn't believe it. I, my, I was holding my head in my hands and I was so excited that I'd gotten not one but two jobs and each was valued at over $4,000. But from that point, from 20 years ago right now, a good example is we have two projects, one's 90000 one's 80000 and I'm going to look at another $90,000 job, even as we speak. 20 years ago, I would have never even comprehended that that would be a possibility. And it's going to be a possibility for you. You are going to experience that kind of growth. I guarantee it. If you stick in this business, if you stay with it, you may, it may not seem feasible right now. If you're doing lawn maintenance, you're doing residential lawn maintenance and you're mowing a bunch of $30 lawns, trust me, you're gonna have an opportunity to do a commercial account. That commercial account's gonna to lead to another commercial account. Those commercial accounts are gonna lead into snow plowing, into bigger projects, into landscaping on those commercial accounts. You may be asked your opinion on things. You may be called in to do consulting. It doesn't matter. The longer you stay in this game, the bigger the projects are going to grow. That's what I'm going to teach you today. I want you to be able to handle that. I want you to prepare for it. So you may think that it's not even within the realm of your capabilities, but you're wrong because it will be. It eventually, you will eventually lead down that road where you will be doing what I'm doing today. I'm not always going to be around doing this stuff. Somebody's going to be taking it over. In 20 years, I'm going to be dead and gone you're going to be taken over. You, I want you to be prepared and ready to know how to do it. Let me put it to you this way. Big projects will always exist. 
look around your neighborhood. You're gonna see big retaining walls. You may see strip malls. You may see different areas, um, commercial sites where they've had a lot of uh, landscaping done on it. Yes, there's already companies in place doing them, but those companies not necessarily going to be around in five, 10, 15, or 20 years. You're gaining the experience right now, and I want you to start preparing your mind to understand what it takes to get to those point, to that place where you can take over those jobs because you are the natural predecessor. Even though you may not think that you can do it at this point, you really are gaining the, the experience, the basics that will lead you down that road to be able to uh, take on those bigger projects. And they are around, they're everywhere. Just like the little projects exist, so do the big ones. And that may be your door to growth. Okay, I just got out of a meeting with uh, the engineer for the city of Maple Grove. Um, the Town Home Association board, three members of the board and the developer for the association. We're here because of this retaining wall. I built this wall probably nine years ago or so. And the bottom tier here is what, four feet tall roughly. The top tier is closer to seven or eight feet tall. And it wraps all the way down and you can see it going all the way around the block right there. That wall is about 16 feet tall and it continues to go around the block. 30,000 square feet in this project, but it, nobody's maintained it. Nobody's done anything to keep this wall in shape. Just because we build them right in the first place doesn't mean they're going to stay that way if you don't take time to do maintenance. And I want to talk to you about that. Every issue has a potential to, to become bigger. If we take a look, doing some maintenance. If you take a look, you can see where the grades behind this wall have dipped down. It's going to blow that wall out. In fact, we had one catastrophic wall failure on this project last year. We had to repair it with $60,000. We got another one coming up. And this one's going to be probably $80,000. It's a bigger issue. We've got to pull two tiers apart and completely reconstruct this entire hillside and re-engineer it. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Doesn't look like much from here, but this retaining wall is probably, I don't know, six feet tall. Can we see that? Can't really see it. But you can see the belly in the wall. Can you see that distinct curve where it's just completely it's just completely shot right there. That's from drainage. It's from not maintaining it. You can see where all the grades have dropped down in here. And now we've got big sinkholes behind this retaining wall. I can literally stick my leg down in here up to my knee. This entire wall has to be rebuilt in this area. It's about a thousand square feet. It's gotta be pulled apart. It's got to be redone to correct it. You can see you can see the distinct angle right there where it's just shot. It's all bowed out. Pulling this one apart, we got to pull the bottom one apart to get to it. Then we've got to go through all. I think there's like 2,000 linear feet of retaining walls out here. We got to fix all those grades. You see that? See where the grade is down? That's supposed to be flush all through there. It's supposed to be right up to the back of the caps, not down there. Between all the work out here, that's about an $80,000 fix. Puts it in perspective a little bit. This portion of the retaining wall last year blew out just like the last portion we just looked at because right above us, they decided to grade this lot out. They created a swale and a set of reestablishing vegetation. They just let all the mud flow right into the drainage zone of this wall. This whole thing came down last year right onto the road where the truck is parked blew out, covered this entire roadway, and you could see where the entire wall was uh, suffered from it. So a lot of times, we'll wrap up a retaining wall, walk away from it, and following year find out that somebody's changed the grades. Somebody's done something new to it. Check these out. We yep, we built all of those. Every single one of them. I want to show you something. This 
this wall over here has not suffered any failures yet, but they're not maintaining it. Really, when you come in to do the lawn maintenance in an account like this, it's just a simple fact of making sure that the grades behind the wall are set and established so that you're not getting any water trapped like I showed you in the prior video. And that's what I'm gonna come in and correct. In this case, I've given the association a proposal to come in and fix every wall on this site and to correct it. That portion of the work is $18,000 alone because they've let it gone for 10 years where you could sell yourself as a lawn maintenance contractor. You can sell yourself. You could sell the fact that you are that company that as you're working around retaining walls, as you're working around hardscapes and other surfaces and other structures, that you're committed to do the maintenance, where you're committed to check to make sure every, everything is working the way it should be and you'll be the person that contact the association and let them know if you see something out of, um, out of compliance. In this case, if that had been done on this retaining wall, there wouldn't be any issues. They wouldn't have $18,000 worth, but the maintenance company that was working here didn't do that. Maybe they weren't informed of it or whatever happened, doesn't matter. It just wasn't done, plain and simple. So there's, a, there's an opening for you. As a lawn maintenance contractor, if you get into these retaining walls, check them. There's potential work, is what I was trying to say. Every problem has the potential to become work for you. And you gotta understand a lot of times, contractors, lawn maintenance contractors, landscaping contractors, they make the mistake of assuming the mantle of responsibility and eating things on their jobs when really it's a valid change order, something that they should be compensated for, they should be paid for. There's another retaining wall we did. Man, we did a lot of walls in this site. Between retaining wall projects, I stopped out to take a look at this, look at this gorgeous swimming pool. I quoted, gave her a quote right over the phone without ever seeing this project and it came out. She has a deposit ready for me. Um, this one is going to be signed, sealed, delivered, added into the schedule. I'm simply going to be removing this swimming pool, filling it in, taking out the fence, and then turning this pool area into uh, a grass area. Not everybody likes these swimming pools, especially in Minnesota. You only get three months of the year out of them. So that's this project. Uh, this was just a side note during the busy day. You know, a lot of times I try to show you things that you can actually see, things that uh, you can picture in these videos. A lot of stuff goes on behind the scenes that I just don't tell you about because how do you describe it? So I'm going to attempt to do that right now. What's happened today, I showed you some pools, retaining walls, things like that, just standard typical stuff. What I haven't told you was uh, a couple, uh, three, four days ago on Friday, one of my dump trucks was sitting out on a site, not running, just sitting there, burst into flames, just caught on fire, okay? There's something that I have to deal with. Then this morning, my truck driver, one of my truck drivers decided to cock off to the uh, project foreman, and both of them, they didn't get in a fist fight, but they got in a verbal fight, both of them left. Both of them took off and just, instead of showing up to work, they just pew, pew, took off. And so now I've got to talk to the customer and let them know, hey, you know what, we're going to be delayed by a day and, and you know, what's going on. And um, now while I was uh, just driving down the road, I got a call that my second, second or third truck driver, he's quitting. And not two weeks notice, more like two days notice. So now I've got a truck, one that's on fire. I've got another truck that the truck driver cocked off to the project foreman. So I got to fire him. He's gone. I got to get rid of him. Uh, you can't disrespect people in a company. It's, what is it? Quick to fire, slow to hire. You got to pick good guys so you don't have these issues. Okay. Um, and then the third truck driver who is going to be getting bumped up and getting a lot more hours and things like that because I was going to fire the other one. Uh, decided he's gone. He's he's moving to I don't know. He's moving like 700 miles away. Didn't let us know about it. So this is behind the scenes stuff. None of it's unusual. You're not gonna see me freaking out about it because as your business grows, as you take on bigger projects and you have more stuff going on, it's always gonna be something. If you let this get to you, it'll drive you insane. 
but don't let it stop you, okay? I don't want, just because I'm telling you about all the problems and all the issues and things like that, I don't want it to slow you down. I want you to go out and pursue your dream because running a bigger company is for some people. That's why there are bigger companies out there and running a smaller company is for some people. Neither one is for me. I like a medium-sized company. I like having just enough that I can manage it without going crazy. That's my comfort zone. So two to four crews, that's where I'm comfortable at. I've ran more crews and it sucks. It's not for me. I've ran less crews and I just, I don't feel like running less crews. I like to, I like that happy medium. Find your comfort zone, wherever it is. Keep that in mind. That's all I wanted to share with you on this one. You know, when I started this day off, the point was to get you used to just what it takes to do bigger projects, level of responsibility. I wanted to get you familiar with it. I wanted to encourage you to take them on. I did not mean to go down the road of possibly scaring you and talking to you about problems and issues that can occur. But in reality, big jobs oftentimes mean big problems, big headaches, but big payoffs as well. And that's the lure of doing those bigger jobs. You know, I want the absolute best for you guys out there. And for some of you, doing bigger work, that's the ticket. You're going to be able to handle it. Awesome. But for other people, staying small is where it's at. And that's just as good. Because at the end of the day, it's about the peace of mind and being able to walk away from the job and enjoy life. Now, my company's been everywhere, all stages in between. What works for me isn't necessarily what's going to work for you. And I want you to understand that. But as your company grows, you're going to have those opportunities. They're going to be there. You can say yes or you can say no. It doesn't matter because what happens next is completely up to you guys. I love you guys. For me, you know what happens next today? It's Monday. I'm an assistant soccer coach. I'm going to go out and teach a bunch of young 12-year-old girls how to become champions. And I love doing that, and I love being the assistant soccer coach. Because guess what? Somebody else has to make all the tough decisions. So, woo that's awesome. Um, if you have any questions, if I can help you grow, if I can help answer anything that's coming up as you're taking on jobs, hit me up. I love helping you guys out, man. You guys are the world to me. I just want to make sure that you're taken care of, that as you're growing, you've got questions coming up, things are going to be coming at you. Ask me, ask the other guys, ask Keith, ask Brian, Top Notch Lons, ask Geek the Freak. These guys are flipping amazing people. You know, those guys are great at lawn mowing maintenance. I'm great at landscaping. That's my forte. You need help. Hit me up. God bless. Take care. Love you guys. Have a good one.